What's up guys, welcome back. We are here today for our week three team builder for the UPA. This week we are going up against Dork and the San Diego Char uh, Charizards? Is it Char yeah, it's Charizards, there we go. Uh, and uh, we are unfortunately 0-2 uh, in our league right now and it's... Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna blame Hacks because I feel like I could have prepped better and played better in both of those games. Uh, but uh, I do believe that hacks had something to do with it. We are now fourth to last in the power rankings, so very unfortunate. And uh, but let's just get into it. I have a very good feeling about this team. I'm bringing my A game this time, guys. I'm bringing some very interesting sets that you guys are going to see in a second. So let's start it off. Let's actually start by reviewing his team. He's got Tyranitar, Nido Queen, Jellicent, Hitmontop, Credilly, Cryogonal, Mega Medicham. Forget the Pichu, ignore it, It's the, pretend it's not there. Uh, the Quillfish, Thunderous, Talonflame, and Verizion. Now, Pichu was uh, was a pick that was, uh, it was a joke pick. Uh, but it was basically other members in the league that chose Semisage or uh, Semiseer for him. That he wanted a fast fire type, and uh, he wasn't around to make his pick, so we just kept going. And then he got frustrated, he ended up picking up Pichu. He's like, why not, might as well just mess up my entire draft. But uh, he ended up switching out a lot of Pokemon for good things. He left the Pichu though. I guess it's just it's nicknamed God. <laughs> so uh, I'm guessing he's going to uh, to not bring it to many games. But uh, it, basically, it's not a threat. I'm not uh, I'm not too worried about it. It would be if we had the Seismitoad. It actually learns Grass Knot. So, <laughs> but other other than that, it's uh, it's not an issue. So I'm not even uh, regarding it. He basically has 10 Pokemon against us. So looking at the rest of his team, uh, Quillfish, Thunderous, Talonflame, and Verizion. So we, uh, the biggest problem to our team, from what I can see, is the Tyranitar. Now we do have a Chestnut, as you can see it is in the team, but Tyranitar actually deals with a lot of things pretty well uh, on my team. Uh, namely, if it's running a Choppleberry, it pretty much walls out Weavile, uh, walls out uh, our Stoutland, uh, so it's, it's kind of difficult to deal with if he decides to bring Chopple on it, but we have ways to get around it. So let's just jump into the team builder and uh, I'll show you guys what I'm bringing. The first thing you see here is Mega Deancey. The nickname right now is question mark because at the time I'm recording this, the uh, transaction video hasn't even gone live. So uh, I still don't know what I'm nicknaming this thing. I'm leaving that up to you guys. Uh, and now I have a few more friends, a few more subscribers. So I'm curious to see what you guys are going to choose as a nickname or what it'll be by the time of the match. But uh, we are bringing our Mega Deancey this week because it has a very favorable matchup against him, actually. He's got a Talonflame, which we pretty much check. Uh, he's got a uh, Verizion, which we can knock out with the Moonblast. He has a, a Tyranitar, which doesn't take very hits too well. Uh, he also has the uh, the Hitmon top. He's got four fighting types on his team last time I checked, right? Is that correct? Uh, he has the Hitmon top. He has the Metacham. No, sorry, he has four Psychic Weeks, is what I calculated, right? Uh, but he has three fighting types on his team, being Hitmon top, Metacham, and Verizion, all with different roles. All don't take Moon Blast very well, so that's why we're bringing this thing. The other reason is, of course, for Magic Bounce. We can bounce back rocks if he decides to lead with Titar, anything like that. Now, you can look at the set. It's a pretty standard set with uh, Moonblast, Earth Power, and Diamond Storm. We're rocking Stealth Rocks instead of Protect, and the reason for that is we have a fully physically defensive Mega Deancey right here. And let me tell you guys what this thing is for right now. This thing is here specifically to bait his Metacham to stay in and fake out into Bullet Punch Me, thinking he can take me out. I'm going to Moonblast him back and knock him out. Because, first of all, this thing still has 356 special attack, non-invested. Secondly, if you don't believe that I can take that hit, look at the calc we got right here. This isn't the right calc. Wait up. <laughs> Why do I have hit on top on here? Okay, we're going to bring up Metacham. Mega Metacham, right? We're going to change it to Adamant over here on the right side. And we're going to give it Bullet Punch because this set doesn't have Bullet Punch. We're going to leave Fake Out. We're going to get rid of that and put Bullet Punch on. So, Fake Out does a max of 10.5. Bullet Punch does a max of 84.2. So, again, unless he crits me, he's not taking us out. And as you can see from the Moonblast damage, we are knocking him out back. Now, another reason I'm running this set. My speed tier. At 256, I outspeed a Needle Queen that has speed crept a Magnezone that is not Scarfed. I outspeed a defensive Hitmontop. I outspeed Quillfish. I outspeed a lot of things. The only things I don't outspeed, of course, are his Thunderous, his Talonflame because of priority and because of its natural speed, Verizion if he runs at max speed. So the things that 
this thing is supposed to beat normally. Uh, it doesn't really outspeed, but it never outspeeds Slenderous anyway, so there's no point for me to run max speed. So I decided to invest it all into defense this week, and that means we can take Stone Edges better from Tyranitar and Crunches if we decide to switch into them. We can take him on tops, uh, close combats a little bit better. We can take pretty much a lot of his team's hits. The fact that Mega Metacham can't knock us out with a quad effective bullet punch off of pure power and almost 700 attack is insane. So, we're bringing this thing physically defensive, hopefully it works out. I can set up rocks on a lot of his team as well. Gonna want to do that after I get hit rid of his hazards. Again, he can't really get up hazards too easily as long as this thing's alive. So, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna have to lead with. I'm kind of hoping that he leads with Nidoqueen and I need a lead with my last Pokemon on the team. And you guys will see the set that I'm running on Mika, our, uh, our Stoutland, when we get to the end here. But our next Pokemon is our Deblade. Now, you would normally say that Deblade is a direct counter to... Uh, Meta, uh, to Metacham, right? So let's just say, for example, he decides to run Fire Punch. And let's check out our Deblade. Deblades, you use Sword Zance. Fire Punch does 44.5 to 52. This is a defensive Pokemon, guys. It's rocking an Eviolite, and he still does that much to us. I'm not risking him running Fire Punch because it actually hits a large portion of my team, and he could easily run that. So I'm not having my Deblade as my direct counter, but I'm going to have it uh, just in case I, I, I scout his, his entire set and I find out he's not running Fire Punch. Then I can pretty much bring in the Blade whenever I want. I don't think he's ever going to go for High Jump Kick while the Blade's around. So that's pretty much uh, a check. It's a check to Metacham, but just by its presence. Also what it does, it beats the Jellicent, uh, as long as he doesn't burn us, of course. We are rocking Sacred Sword, as you can see, Shadow Claw, Shadow Sneak, and Sword Dance. I'm not running a Steel move, because the only things that the Steel move hits, the Fighting move can hit either harder or for almost the same amount of damage, being his Cryogonal and his Tyranitar. So that's why I'm rocking it this way. Shadow Claw does more to Pokemon uh, that would normally be able to take a Shadow Sneak very well. We can Sword Dance, we can then follow it up with a Shadow Claw. We pretty much force a switch on his Metacham if we come in on it. Uh, after it gets a kill, so I can Swords Dance and then proceed to start Shadow Clawing things that would normally take me on very well because of their, uh, because of their uh, bulk and they can take on Shadow Sneaks, but they will not be able to take Shadow Claws. So that's what this thing is for. Again, we're not rocking the Iron Head because there's no point. It it doesn't hit on anything on his team any harder than uh, Sacred Sword would. And also, I can hit the Talon Flame very hard with a Shadow Claw. By the way, coming back to the Ansi for a second. Um, I calced Banded Brave Bird or Banded Flare Blitz from Talonflame. It does a lot to Mega Deancey if it's not running defense. Actually, Brave Bird has a chance to two-hit KO. So I also EV'd it in a way where I can take Banded Talonflame's hits and plus two Talonflame's hits. Even after we're a little bit weakened, we'll be able to knock it back out with the Diamond Storm. So that's pretty good. He also can't Will-O-Wisp us because of lovely Magic Bounce. So our next Pokemon here is Chestnut, though. Now, the way I'm running Chestnut is... I'm expecting this thing to force switches on some of his mem- Oh, excuse me. Uh, that's my description for my videos. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, Chestnut here, and I'm expecting it to force switches on some of his Pokemon. Namely, the uh, Verizion, because it can't touch me very well, and I can Zen Headbutt it back. Uh, the the Thunderous can hit us with HP Flying. The Tyranitar and the Credilly are the big things. If he stays in with Credilly on me, I can get up a sub in front of him. As you can see, we're rocking Sea Bomb, Rock Slide, and Zen Headbutt. This hits the, gra the vast majority of his team. Zen Headbutt is there for the Verizion and the Quillfish that would otherwise take me on one-on-one -on -one pretty well. Uh, of course, Quillfish would do it extremely well with Poison Jab. Uh, I have Seed Bomb on there for the Tyranitar to be able to hit it special, uh, super effectively. Obviously, we could be running the Fighting type move, but he does have a Ghost uh, and a, quite a few Fighting Resists, uh, namely Talon Flame, uh, Quillfish, Nido Queen. He has two Poison types, so uh, he has things to cover that. Uh, so we're running Seed Bomb to be able to hit the Titar, the Jellicent, we can hit the Quillfish for neutral, it does a lot to Cryogonal because its uh, physical defense is not very good, but the last move we're rocking is Rock Slide, and now what I'm expecting to happen is, come in on a Titar, threaten it out if I find out that it's not special and going for Fire Blast, sub up, have him switch into his Talonflame or his Thunderous to be able to take a uh, Grass or a Fighting type hit, and then rock slide them and knock them out. We're rocking max attack, we're not adamant. This still knocks out Talonflame and it does a tremendous amount to Thunderous. It does something like 80%. So 
we're going to be sitting behind a sub a lot. And I don't think he can bring sand with Titar, so we won't be taking residual. We'll be gaining leftovers back. So I just need to make sure that my chest knock comes on, on the right Pokemon to get up a sub. I'm running another sub Pokemon you guys will see in a second. Uh, not in a second, in a couple of seconds. But our next Pokemon here is Weasley the Weavile. Weavile does a tremendous amount of work to his team. Uh, being able to low kick the Tyranitar, uh, Icicle Crash the Nidoqueen, knock off the Jellicent. You know, the, the regular stuff. Knock off the, the Metacham, it can get off a big bullet punch on me, but it can't knock me out from full, even an adamant one. Uh, the Thunderous would go down to an Ice Shard at plus two. Uh, the Talonflame would take a lot as well. Verizion would take a lot from Ice Shard at plus two as well. So, I just need to weaken his team a little bit. Either get up rocks with Deancey or Shadow Sneak things with uh, with the Blade, and that should be over and done with. Now, the reason I'm rocking Lumberry Swords Dance, two reasons. The Lumberry is there for him potentially thinking he can just come in and uh, Thunder Wave my Weavile with his Thunderous and gets knocked out by an Ice Shard as a result uh, or takes a lot of damage. I do not get paralyzed because of the Lumberry and I knock him out with the next Ice Shard. Swords Dance is there because there's a very good likelihood that he could either pack a Chopple Berry on his T-Tar, in which case it could take a low kick, a uh, Yachi Berry on his Nidoqueen, which means it could take a an Icicle Crash usually. We're not rocking Icicle Crash, but it's fine. Uh, plus two knockoff. Let's actually calc that really quickly because that's one of the calcs I didn't run. Nidoqueen. Let's say it's a defensive entry hazard setter versus a Weavile. All right. Let's say we're all out attacker. We are jolly. Uh, knockoff normally does 40 to 48. So at plus two, it's doing 80 to 95. So if I get, again, a little bit of residual damage, if he thinks that he can come in on my Deblade and just threaten me out with an Earth Power and just soak up a hit from Shadow Sneak, he's putting himself in range for my plus two knockoff. If I get up a Swords Dance with this thing, his team is in danger. Like, big danger. Like, I can I can knock out almost everything. I'm running Ice Shard because of Talonflame. Because if it's banded, it will be able to knock me out with a Brave Bird, and I need to out-prioritize it in some way after it's taken a little bit of damage. So I'm highly, I'm very much expecting a banded Talonflame because it does a tremendous amount to my team. Uh, it handles the Seismitoad, handles the Chestnut, obviously. Uh, banded Flare Blitz does, I, I think it actually knocks out the Blade even with the Eviolite, so it does a lot. Don't get fooled by Talonflame's low attack that's equivalent to Amoongus's or even lower, I think. It can still hit pretty hard because of those high base power moves. So this is our Weavile this week. I could also just knock off Aisha. It's basically Weavile without the Life Orb. And we're also packing a little bit of heat in Swords Dance and Lumberry. Uh, the other reason I was rocking Lumberry was because if his Jellicent thinks that it can stay in on me because it's Colber and Scald me, if it gets a burn, I'll be able to Swords Dance up, ignore the burn, get rid of it, and knock it out with the knockoff afterwards. So... That's pretty much what this is. Our next Pokemon is our Latias. Now, Latias has gotten paralyzed two weeks in a row, guys. And its speed got shattered and, and just eliminated from the battle. So, it became pretty much useless. It almost, almost won me the game, the first match. But it got crit by Keldeo, so we won't talk about that. Now, the set I'm running this week, if you guys see. Leftovers, Substitute. So, very similar to our Chestnut. Because this thing, once again, forces switches. Just its uh, again, we bring up the wrong thing. Uh, this just its presence alone, because of the fact that it has Psychic on it, it can force out Nido Queen or Hitmontop, uh, or even his uh, Verizion. Uh, we are speed uh, speed speed tiered to outspeed Verizion uh, with the Hidden Power Fighting. We're 244 speed. Uh, 347 is what we hit. Verizion hits 346, just like Keldeo, just like Terrakion. So we're, uh, we're EV to outspeed it and be able to hit it extremely hard with a Psychic, so that scares it out. His main response to Latias is Tyranitar. Now, let me, ju guys, let me just give you guys a little bit of insight here. Titar can run multiple different sets. It's a very, very versatile Pokemon. But when you decide to run it a very specific way one week, if your opponent calls it right, then they can shut you down. If he runs Scarf Titar, and I'm sitting behind a sub that I set up on either his Nidoqueen, his Hitmontop, his Verizion, his Quillfish, those are the four psychic weeks on his team. He can't not bring all four of them, because we already went over the fact that he's only got 11 Pokemon. If he doesn't bring four of them, that means he's bringing the other seven, which means he's bringing the combination of Talonflame, Thunderous, Quillfish, um, Mega Metacham, which still doesn't take a psychic too well, uh, Cryogonal and Cridilly. 
and po possibly Jellicent, but I don't expect that to be the case because then he wouldn't have a Stealth Rocker. I'm pretty sure his Nido Queen is coming. So if at least his Nido Queen and his Verizion show up to the game, then I'm happy. But basically, we're gonna get up a sub. He's gonna switch into his Titar, thinking he can pursue Trap us, do what Titar normally does in OU. We're gonna be sitting behind a sub. Then we get to go for Hidden Power Fighting. And based on the damage, well, first of all, if he outspeeds us and goes for a crunch, we know he's scarfed. If he does not outspeed us and he knocks out our sub, we can gauge what type uh, what type of Titar he is solely on the hidden power fighting damage. If he's Choppel, it'll pop. If he's specially defensive, we'll see it based on the damage. If he's banded, we'll see it based on the damage. And let me tell you something. If he's banded, even in the sand, with this much special attack investment, there's a pretty good chance, I think it's about a 60% chance to two hit KO him with the hidden power fighting. So if he's banded, after one HP fighting, if we get a good roll, we could potentially force him out. And that's Latias' purpose this week. It's also a defogger because I still need the potential to uh, get rid of hazards. He can set up toxic spikes on me and he can set up stealth rocks with Nido Queen. So I need to make sure that I can keep those away from the rest of my team. I don't want my chest not getting worn down by toxic spikes, nor do I want my Stoutland getting worn down. Basically, uh, just need defog just as a safety measure in case the Mega DNC doesn't work out and I really only use it to get rid of the Mega Medicham, which is a big threat to my team if he's packing the Fire Punch. So, uh, and just coming back to Mega Medicham for a second, if he is running Fake Out, Bullet Punch, Fire Punch, that means he doesn't have anything for my Latias because he would need to run the Fighting Move. And we have a little bit of bulk and we can knock him out with two Psychics. So he would need to run Ice Punch to be able to hit us. And if he doesn't run the fighting move, oh well, then our Stoutland just became a little more viable. We have a, an Assault Vest Stoutland right here with Intimidate, Return, Crunch, Superpower, and this awesome move called Rock Tomb that I found on this thing. Man, it's, it's really, really useful. So you can see, again, I bring up the wrong thing, you can see our speed investment, you can see our attack investment, and you can see our spadef investment. Our spadef investment is to be able to take two sludge waves from Nido Queen, regardless of its investment. If it's max, special attack, modest, life orb, sludge wave, doesn't two hit KO us. We live. And I can hit it with two returns and knock it out. The first one does about 52. So the next one would be able to knock it out. The next move is Crunch, because as you can see, he has a Jellicent, and Jellicent pretty much walls Stoutland otherwise, but with Crunch, we're able to hit it. Our next move is Superpower, that is for the Titar and for the Cryogonal. The Cryogonal, I'm pretty sure, dies to return anyway, but it does <laughs> we're just going to pack it anyway just for the Titar. And finally, we're rocking Rock Tomb. Now, what does Rock Tomb do for me? Well, again, if Stoutland forces a switch, and I go for Rock Tomb, He's either going into something like Verizion or Tyranitar. Now, let's say his Tyranitar is Scarfed. We just lowered its speed. And our speed is 244. Last time I checked, Tyranitar hits 243. So we'll be able to follow that up with a superpower and knock him out. If he's not Choppel, of course. If he is, then I don't think there's any move he can go for to knock us out anyway. Because we still have decent bulk. We have 311 uh, HP and 216 defense. So if he's Choppel, he's probably running a little bit of defense investment as well. We lower our defense, so we could potentially not take the hit with 60 defense, technically. But we'll get to find out what set he is, just with Stoutland. Rock Tomb also hits the Talon Flame, And it's able to, let's say he wants to bulk up. I'll still be able to knock him out with a uh, an adamant 200 attack Stoutland's Rock Tomb. Guaranteed. And then, of course, Rock Tomb can also hit the Verizion on the switch, which means if we weaken that thing a little bit throughout the game, I might be able to take it out with the following return, because we'll be faster once again. So, this is pretty much the team. I'm really banking on a lot of Pokemon forcing switches. As you can see, Weavile's packing the Swords Dance, specifically because I think I'm going to force switches, or I can take status moves and Lumberry them off. I'm packing the Sub on our Latias and our Chestnut. I highly... Uh, debated whether I wanted to run a uh, sub, um, a sub um, be belly drum set with uh, with the Salic Berry. Is it Salic that uh, increases your speed indefinitely? Yeah, because Custap is once. So with the with the Salic Berry uh, to increase its speed. I saw that he had a Talon Flame, 
and I saw that he had a couple of other things on his team, like Quillfish that could lower our attack, and, and so on, and uh, I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really feeling it. He could also bring in Metacham and fake out to break the sub that we were behind, and then follow that up by going into Talonflame and knocking us out, so... Really not too interested in running that set. I'd rather, mad, much rather run the leftover set and just get off hits whenever I can. This thing's job and Latias's job are going to be to weaken his team as well as the blade throughout the course of the game, so that Weavile can pick up kills and so that Stoutland can pick up kills as well. So this is uh, we're we're just forcing switches with all of our Pokemon. This is that's basically what we're going to be doing all game. And um, I might lead with the blade. Uh, against his uh, against his Mega Medicham if I think that's what's gonna lead, but I'm pretty sure he would lead with the Nido Queen looking at our team, especially if he's Yachi Berry and he thinks he can take the hit from Weavile. Then I'll lead with Stoutland. I'll hit it with a return. He gets up rocks, and then on the following turn I'll either go for Rock Tomb or predict his Titar and go for Super Power, something along those lines. And if he's rocking the Yachi Berry, then that means he's not rocking the Life Orb, and he can't hit Latias as hard with an Ice Beam, and I'll be able to knock him out with a Psychic. So. Again, I think we have his team pretty much covered. Uh, he is 1-1 one one right now. He had a pretty good first game 1, honestly. I watched it. It was, it was pretty convincing. Uh, second game, I actually haven't gotten around to watching it. I'm going to have to watch his replays to see a little bit of how he plays. But this is the team that I am bringing. I am sticking to it. On both other team builders, I readjusted before recording team builder, so I wasn't 100% sure of myself, as you could tell. And it ended up biting me in the butt, so... That's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a like down below. If you're hyped for the match as well, leave a like down below. Uh, leave me a comment if you want to see me use any uh, crazy sets this uh, this season. We have a few more people from League Play now subscribed to the channel. If you're watching this, come up with something for me. If you don't know the rest of the team, go watch my draft review. It's a little bit earlier in my videos. It's about two or three weeks ago. Definitely three because it, it would have been before the season started. But that's it, guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Looking forward to the battle, and I'll see you guys later.